Okay. Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to another episode of Strength Talks. I am your host, Will DM Port, and we are still working on this great series of the Enneagram. Uh, we're we're going to go over all nine types, and we have two experts once again with us, Ingrid Staub and Liz Wagley. I'm learning so much today, and it's very interesting because, you know, we've uh, we haven't really gone over it, but mentioned that Liz is a cartoonist, and she actually made an album. Okay, an album. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna jump into that too, because I want to find out like, where does the inspiration come from? I'm gonna make an album like that. Uh, <laughs> and so we're here today. We're we're going to discuss the romantic uh, type of enneagrams, which is type four. So hello, how are you doing? Good, great, and you know, um, Liz has a little bit of four romantic in her, which probably explains the album and the art and all the cool stuff she's created. <laughs> you got to look like yikes! I'm like, is that <laughs> is that a type? Do you run from that type or something? Well, uh, I didn't hear that. Oh, well, she's a type five, which will be in the next episode. Mm-hmm. But she has a little bit of four too. Yeah, we we have something called wings, which mm-hmm. are the types on each side of us. So mm-hmm. I'm a five with a four wing. The romantic wing is my wing, and uh, romantics feel things deeply, and so there are a lot of artists and musicians and writers and soul searchers that are are the four type including Beethoven. I love Beethoven. And I I was asked to do something at one of the conferences that the Enneagram people have. And I just had the most fun I think I've ever had in my life going through all 32 of Beethoven's sonatas, playing them on the piano for myself. And I could hear in his sonatas little parts that sounded like all nine Enneagram points. All wow. personalities, they sort of dropped out. And so I made from that this uh, presentation where I would talk about Beethoven and I would say, and in this sonata, it goes kind of like a, like a perfectionist working over something to get it perfect. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that sonata sounded like that one personality. And then there was another son- part of a sonata that sounded like the two with a uh, very warm and relating part, and I played that on the on the seat on the on the at the uh, Enneagram conference, which later I recorded in a studio, a professional studio, and made into a CD. And then I went through all nine types with various examples for each type from Beethoven's sonatas. Wow! And I ever had to to get to get those sonatas because I played them all through, which took hours and hours and days and days to do. And uh, so that's what the CD is. It's called the Beethoven Enneagram. Well, wow. you you are the Enneagram Whisperer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be a good title. <laughs> Darn! <laughs> <Right now. laughs> well, you can go back for album number two. <laughs> I would, if I did album number two, it would be the Bach Enneagram, because I love Bach, and I've actually worked on it a little bit already. Wow. You hear that, people? It's coming out. Be looking out on your iTunes. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, okay, yes, if, if you haven't figured out, uh, oh, I did mention that. We are talking about the romantic type, So, and, and Liz touched, it on, touched on it a little bit, but what are some of the, the, the characteristics of the romantic? Well, I love type? this because the four is one of the very easiest to spot, and especially in women. The, the four, four women, romantic women dress um, in a special way. Well, fours are special. I mean, they think they're special. <laughs> and they are special. <laughs> they are, they're, ve- they're very soul-searching. They want to know the meaning of life. They're looking for the meaning of life. Their values are so important to them. And they're compassionate. And uh, 
Mm. And so the way they dress, uh, of course they don't all dress the same way, but there's usually a special flair to the way they dress. And it's artistic, and sometimes it's a little bit toward the hippie style, or uh, what's that new style, black, all in black? What's that new one? Goth. The goth. Gothic. If you see a gothic uh, style, it might be, it's likely to be a, a romantic. Romantics are often interested in death, which is a subject I'm, I just wrote a book on. It's called The Enneagram of Death, which is a series of maybe 50 or more essays and stories of real people who had some interest in uh, either they've experienced a serious illness or they know somebody who died that touched them deeply. And um, it's uh, a discussion about death. And, uh, I've or at least melancholy. If not death, then at least a sense of melancholy. Yeah, sometimes the four... I'm, this isn't about my book that you're talking about now. Right. But oh, yeah. You're talking about uh, fours have often experienced a little more melancholy than, than most types. And sometimes it will go into a real depression. So they're different they're from the other types. of like, well, All other types are different from each other, but in that particular way. They have an artistic temperament. They tend to be more dramatic than most types. Um, and uh, they're a very interesting type of person. And their careers, sometimes they're artists, but they're not always artists. If they work in corporations, they might work on the brand and, and the type maybe in, in the... Um, it, well, you're more familiar with these words. Yeah, like branding, like coming up with something very unique for the company to help yeah. make the company special and different. And they make very good therapists with mm. their compassion. And they can do it any job, of course. They don't they don't have to be in just a couple of types of jobs. They can do many jobs. Mm. They can use their brain, they they're you know, and maybe even work in computers, but they have this special style. Mm. I thought about becoming a, a therapist until I found that the therapy is a process. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm not a process person. I'm, I'll be like, stop doing that. That's the, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, <laughs> that's me. But, uh, yeah, since, so, um, oh. since you brought up that type, I mean, since you brought up those characteristics, how do you, uh, work with a person, uh, like, like that on your team in an office, or if you, uh, are a boss, supervisor, manager, how do you bring out their best selves with, the, with their personality type? So the first thing to know, if you're a type 4, you're working with a 4, is that um, their greatest strengths have something to do with expressing individuality. So, um, you know, as Liz mentioned, with the arts, that's a, an obvious one, you know, being a singer-songwriter or something, but let's say you're a doctor, it might have to do with honoring the individuality of each of your patients, you know, and having a lot of compassion for each person and what they're going through. So within expressing individuality, there's different types of skills, you know, as Liz mentioned, you know, not everyone's the same, but you probably have at least two of these five. So um, the first is authenticity, the second is compassion, the third is creativity. The fourth is um, dauntlessness. And um, the fifth is uh, interpreting meaning or being very discriminating. Mm. And I would kind of put in the same category. So, um, so anyway, when you're working with someone who's a four or you're a four, you want to really um, take advantage of the fact that this person is probably very discriminating and um, is tuned into expressing individuality. So like, um, you know, in the example we said for branding for a company, boy, if you want your brand to be different and stand out in the marketplace, <laughs> and you need to come up with something really cool, you know, a four might be the person to help you with that. Um, you don't want to be like every other brand out there, you know, so you've got to have some originality. And, um, you know, the Fours do tend to be quite sensitive and compassionate, so mm -hmm. you need to create an environment where they have at least some 
if there's you know, at least time away from people so they can kind of be off on their own and just um, without being bombarded by a lot of um, stuff, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, but then they can show a lot of compassion for people in the workplace. Okay, H hold on for a second. <laughs> there seems to be someone at my at my door, and I see this is what happens when thing is live. Okay, <laughs> so let me do this for a second. <clears throat> <laughs> Right. Oh, and I'm back. That happened. That was the deli delivery man. Looks like some slacks that I ordered last month. They were supposed to be delivered by the 23rd. And here we are. <laughs> here we are now. Okay, In Ingrid, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You were talking about about the romantic person. Oh, when you ex when you describe that person, it makes me think of Steve Jobs. I don't know why. You know, it's funny. It Steve does. Jobs has been hard to type. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, some parts of him, you know, because there's that thing, think different is the logo mm -hmm. or the one of the taglines for Apple. Although, it maybe it was a type four that was on his team that came up with that. Some people do say he's a four. And other people think he's a one. And some people think he's an eight. Some people think he's yeah. a seven. Yeah. So it's hard to he say, but um, but there must have been a four somehow involved in. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You know, aesthetically apples. speaking, he's that his Apple stuff is pretty fourish. Yeah, and there's got to be a lot of fours at Apple making discriminating and really yeah. having a good sense of aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Yes, that forest is expensive. They need to come down to the <laughs> yeah. PC world price. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Okay, now let's just say I'm a I'm a four, and I'm trying to figure out uh, what I like, what I'm passionate about, and sort of uh, where I should look to pursue a career in. What is the process I should start looking at? Yeah, it's, you know, it's challenging for type 4s. Um, I was mentioning, like, the type 1 has it easy. The types 1, 2, and 3, I think, have it a lot easier in a way. Um, the type 4, you know, you really needed the opportunity to express your individuality. Mm -hmm. And so some environments are just not going to provide that for you. So you do need to be very discriminating, you know, and honor what's special about yourself and really take time to, it might take you a long time. You I need, know. You need understanding, don't you think? Yeah. You need, maybe in general, the smaller environment would be more, more likely to be conducive to that in general. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I have a friend who I think her career story is a great example of how if you're a type four, you, it might take you a while to figure out what is your medium for expressing your creativity. Um, she tried cooking. She went to the Culinary Institute. She tried film. She worked at a film school. She tried writing. She applied to um, writing, creative writing programs. After actually years of <laughs> searching, she has landed on something really cool, and she started an ice cream business up in Seattle called Parfait Ice Cream. And she's got the best ice cream. She was mentioned best ice cream in the West um, wow. in Sunset Magazine. She's featured on NPR. She's getting all this great PR and her your her um food is not only unique, special, you know, has a lot of artistry, but I mentioned authenticity earlier. In her case, she expresses authenticity because it's all um, organic. There's no fillers or any kind of junky stuff in her ice cream. That's her, or that's her way of being authentic is this organic ice cream. <laughs> no, no junky stuff. Uh, okay, <clears throat> we talked about careers because in this, in this romantic time is very interesting uh, to me. Um, how are they uh, in, a, in a relationship? 
um, some forests don't have a relationship. They find it difficult. Wow. So there's some certain types, threes and fours, huh? That don't have as many relationships as other types because it's harder because they're more uh, for different reasons. Intimacy is a little harder for them. In you know, not all of them at all, but you'll find less relationships in, in probably those two types. Um, um, fours might some of some fours are idiosyncratic too. That they're, diff, they're just not. They don't go with the flow as easily as some people. Um, but well, by the name romantic, you can tell that a lot of words are true romantics. They love love and love being in love. And but that's not know. that's not the term we mean by romantic. We mean not the romantic like romance with two, two people. It's more comes from the romance of like a novel. Mm. I think that's the meaning of that that word. Not it doesn't mean two people. Which would be kind of like the yeah. el the elevation of everyday life. So instead of just yeah. this mundane, boring life, like kind of raising yeah, things do. to a more artful or special level, yeah. which can be done. It's pretty cool when you're around fours. They can make make the day really special. You know, enjoying food or music or color or something that kind of makes it. Better than just blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a four there with you, right? Yeah. You do. Well, is is she yeah. interesting and and yeah. and sort well, of sharing something about herself? <laughs> She's a newly discovered four uh, in terms of her own. She just Hi. figured out she was a four. Yeah. Um. I I'm actually very on much on the arrow of four and two. Um, Do you want to say who is, you are? Hi, I'm sorry. I'm Joyce. <laughs> I'm a UC Berkeley student. I'm a senior. I'm about to graduate in the spring, and yeah, I'm externing for Elizabeth here for this winter break. Um, her excellent, 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 excellent. Yeah. So you say you discovered uh, yourself to be a four. Uh, is there anything you heard in in this show today that sort of rings true to you? Yeah, lots. Um, I think it's really true that um, it may be more difficult to um, or take a, a longer process to find a career because even in school, while I was thinking about a major, um, it wasn't it wasn't easy to settle on something that I really wanted to do or something. Um, even if I have my interests, like I like to. Um, write in my free time a little bit, and I really enjoy music. I play the piano. Um, even with my interests, it was hard to find an area of study that I could really use um, for a future career, or something that was more practical to use that um, I could use later on. But um, I think what I learned within these four, three and a half years that I've been in school is that um, a lot of it is just, it takes patience, and um, you just try a lot of things and get a lot of experiences and something will come up, <laughs> which is what I'm doing here too. Yes. One of Joyce's uh, ideas she might like to be is an editor, a book editor, mm -hmm. and I'd like to mention that our book editor for The Career Within You that we, that Ingrid and I wrote together, our editor was a four, and he was very sensitive, and one thing I he did that I appreciated a lot was I had drawn a cartoon of a man in a jail suit, and he thought that he, he rejected that cartoon, and editors haven't rejected very many of my cartoons. But I think I could say that he thought the depiction of the, of the inmate was rather clownish. I don't know if you remember that cartoon. He thought it was a little insulting to somebody in jail. And he was, at the time, he was volunteering to help inmates at San Quentin Prison here in California. And he had a very soft spot for prison inmates. And I thought, what a kind man. I, it just hadn't occurred to me that mm -hmm. I was making fun of, of prisoners. It just didn't enter my mind. And, and I really thought that, that was good that he rejected that cartoon. Because just was something I... I didn't think about. 
And so he was very compassionate. And I really like that. And that's typical of... And discriminating. Some, and discriminating in a good way, you know, of, of this uh, romantic type editor. And, and he, he did a few other things along those lines with our book. If he didn't think they were good taste, uh, he would let us know. Uh, more than any edi other editor I've had. And I think he was the only four editor that I've had. Out of seven. Uh, uh, Joyce, what, what major did you finally choose? I'm studying comparative literature right now with a minor in education. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Comparative. So, compar that literature is just a lot of, a lot of reading for me. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of reading. Um, it's different from English because you read literature in a different language as well. So it's comparing two different cultures or two different... Um, Mindsets that way. Wow. I went to film school. I just rather watch it. So that's, <laughs> that's how I how I am. So this is interesting. See, people, we don't just talk about it. We bring it to life. Okay. We're rejoicing, sharing her experiences. Because that's that's how we do it over here. That's how we do it. So thank you, Joyce, for sharing your your, your experiences experience with us today. It was great to have you. Thank you for having me. Excellent, excellent. Ingrid. Ingrid's, Ingrid's creeping out to <laughs> use the uh, car so she doesn't get a ticket. <laughs> she, she will be back soon. <laughs> All righty, people. You, again, this is live. You never know what's going to happen. Ingrid has stepped out. So we're going to go ahead and call it a wrap. Uh, we will be back for the five, the observer, which is Liz's type. So I have to do this today because I really want to see what's going on with Liz. Okay. She's, she, she's been sitting back there and giving all this great information and smiling. So now we're going to turn the tables on her and see what's going on. So again, thanks for watching and we'll be back.